What's up, everybody? It's your boy TC. I'm back with another video. Um, there's a few people that have followed my channel that know that I used I had a video on the uh, LG Wave Force back a couple years ago that I deleted because of the sound quality. But I feel like I can try to recreate that video and give y'all a much better sounding, much better quality, much higher quality video detailing the uh, Samsung Aquajet Active Wash with VRT. Uh, basically, the Samsung High Efficiency Top Loader Washing Machine right here. Um, I believe this one is the 4.5. No, this one, I think it's 4.5 or 5.0 cubic feet uh, laundry pair. I'll uh, get. I think my grandma still has the papers on the video on the save somewhere, so I'll try to find those papers. And uh, but yeah, this is the Samsung High Efficiency Top Loader, and this is the one with the built-in sink, which is made for you know hand washing and. And, uh, you know, letting stuff kind of pre-soak right there, which you can, uh, there's also a cycle on this washer for pre-soak. But, honestly, this washer isn't the biggest washer on the market, but being that this washer does not have an agitator in the middle, that aids in a whole lot more space. So, those comforters, those bed spreads, those large loads, those towels, those those you know floor mats that you got in your house bulky items can fit inside these washers and the design of that impeller can actually handle those type of loads um, because here's the thing here's one thing that I've noticed about these high efficiency washers those made by like Maytag and uh, Whirlpool the one and and the ones with the plastic you know one and two uh, I mean not one and two two to three rib super flat uh, the ones that the, the 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 ribs on the impellers don't come up that much. Those are the worst type of ones to get. Like the Whirlpool Cabrio, the Maytag Bravos. Those are the ones that you need to stay away from. Honestly, my opinion. Before I even start this video, LG is still the best brand that I would go with. But you know, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna I'm gonna do this Samsung because I talked both of my grandparents and to get both by my grandparents on both sides of the family into getting the Samsung uh, laundry pair with the matching dryer. Um, so that's also a steam dryer right there, but we're gonna focus on the washer right now. Um, so I'm gonna start at the front. The first thing you're gonna notice when you buy this washer is you get a 10 year warranty on the digital inverter motor, which is the, the direct drive motor that drives this washing machine. You get a 10 year warranty on that. So if for whatever reason, the motor in this washing machine quits or malfunctions or loses its power or something goes wrong, you got a 10 year warranty on that. So make sure when you buy it, you keep all your papers. And if you bought an extended warranty from the store that you bought it from, make sure you keep those papers too. Um, you've also got your uh, lid lock because these high efficiency washers, you no longer have the ability to uh, start the washer and have the water flowing like you do the traditional agitator style, non lid lock traditional washing machines, you know, that you can actually rinse the laundry detergent cup out and the fabric softener cup out and pour the fabric softener in the middle of the agitator. You no longer have that option on these uh, high efficiency washing machines. Um, so this button right here, this is your water jet button. And on, if you look closely right here, that there's water that comes out of this little spout right here. So when you press this right here, the way you release that sink is you press it and it drops down and you, you now have your water for your sink. So instead of having to drag your stuff back and forth from the sink to the washer, from a wash bucket, etc., you now have the ability to take care of all that in the washer. And when you're done, you just flip it up and your clothes and the water will fall into the, uh, the drum. And I'm gonna actually show you what will happen if you use that function and it senses that there's water in there, it will actually drain that water out so you don't have standing water sitting in there. So if for some reason you're just trying to dump the water out and you didn't want to, you know, wash the clothes at the moment, it will drain that water out. Um, so that's it for here. You also have your liquid bleach. You put your bleach right here um, and you have to bleach it by load. You don't, you don't pour a lot of bleach in here and it dispenses by the size of the load, like some of those washers do, they have that active, that that uh, accurate dispense, like the laundry detergent. You can pour up to a certain amount of detergent in there, and it will dispense it according to the size of the load. You have to actually pl place it in there uh, every load. So right here, you have your laundry detergent, and if you want to use uh, powder detergent, I see it's hard to do this with one hand, but if you want to do powder detergent. Uh, it says remove tray for powder. I don't know if you can actually see that or not. It says remove the tray for powder. Of course, you can take that tray out. Um, 
very difficult to do with one hand. Plus, there's a little bit of detergent right there, so it's kind of slippery. But basically, you take this tray out for uh, if you've got powder detergent, if, if you will. And then your fabric softener will go right here, of course. And then that's it for that part. Now, onto the control panel, as you can see, um, you've got a variety of different cycles here. This is not your... Uh, Super 16, 14, 6, and 10 minute wash cycles. These are thorough wash cycles that are um, thorough wash cycles that you have for each different type of clothing that you have. So like for me, for the load that I've got, th there's a mixture of my work clothes that I've gotten dirty in because I am an HVAC technician. So my clothes do get dirty because I'm under houses. I sweat, you know, I get dirty. Uh, get that insulation, that fiberglass insulation all over me and everything. So this will definitely be a heavy duty wash and I probably want to use a warmer type of water. But as you can see, I've got your normal. The ones highlighted in blue are going to indicate the washes where you get the AquaJet function. As you can see, AquaJet and AquaJet. That's the deep clean function. The ones in white, those are just regular cycles that you do not get the, uh, the AquaJet with. Um, active wash is the sink. But uh, you've got waterproof for stuff like raincoats, waterproof jackets, swim trunks, uh, let's see what else, shower curtains. Uh, what else will be waterproof? Those, uh, those shower mats that you have on the bottom of your shower and stuff at, at the floor of your bathtub and stuff. You know, stuff like waterproof delicates. You got your delicates, um, stuff for like stuff that needs to be gently washed. Your bedding. Now I'm gonna tell you when you on these washing machines, not all of them have a cycle for towels. Bulky bedding, towels. Those are those essentially fall in the same category because what you have to understand with these new washers is they spin at such a greater amount of speed over the traditional washing machines with the agitator because they have those variable speed inverter motors in them and the, uh, and, and the VRT, which is vibration reduction technology. LG calls it true balance. Um, basically, it's all the same thing with a different name. They're able to balance themselves based on the unevenness and the size of the load. Um, they can actually remain pretty darn stable and, and continue to spin at such a high speed. Um, now, I'm not, I'm not really too much sure about the Samsung, if it would do it, but I know our LG Wave Force that we had, that my parents have, uh, that washer will actually stop the load from spinning if it notices there's too much of a drum shake, and it will fill the drum up with water and try to swoosh the clothes around to redistribute the load. So if there's too many clothes on this side, and not enough on this side, or this side, or that side, it will try to distribute that with its own computer. And nine times out of ten, it will fix the issue if you let it do what it's supposed to do. But if it can't fix the issue, it'll display a load, like, it'll display a, 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 message right here that says like ue or error or something like that it says the load is uneven and you will have to fix it manually but it will try on its own keep in mind it will use more water trying to do that um th speaking of water um speak these washing machines they do use less water i'm here to tell you these are not the ones where you get the small medium large extra large or super plus size low you cannot know on you can, on this wash you cannot select the load size it has the auto sensing technology in it and I will say that LG's is a lot more accurate than Samsung's because there have been times where I have filled this drum up. And I'm here to tell you, it's not so much the washing machine that the issue lies in. It's the, it's a lot of times it's user error. But if you're loading the washing machine correctly like you're supposed to, a lot of times it will sense the load correctly. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how to properly load these types of washing machines because they all sense differently. They all have their different you know, programming as to how they sense the size of the load. Um, so you got permanent press, normal, colors and darks, um, active wear, that would be like for your gym wear, your sports clothes, quick wash, that's for some, that's for, that's for no more than maybe 12 to 15 items. And I'm talking small items, 15 at the most. And you got your extra spin and then your rinse plus spin. Now here's the thing about this washer. When you select something like normal or any of these cycles right here, you can't, you don't have the option to do an extra rinse to tack on to that cycle. You have to manually, once the load is done, once the cycle has ended, it gave you its little song, end of cycle signal. Um, 
you have to go in, power it back up, and select rinse plus spin. I know with LG, you can actually select extra rinse at the end of any cycle. And matter of fact, LG will let you do up to two extra rinses on top of the already programmed and standard rinse. So you can get up to three rinses on the LG's Wave Force or LG's. That's with any of the LG's newer washers from the Wave Force 2011 model on up. You can get up to three rinses. Um, and you also have the option to select the button on the LG for if you have fabric softener so it rinses the clothes a little bit more thoroughly and for a little bit longer. Now I'm going to go ahead and power this up. And it also defaults to the very last cycle that I just used, which was a normal wash with a heavy soil level and AquaJet deep clean. That puts me at an hour and 24 minutes. Another thing to note is that these washers, they do take longer to wash. You must understand these are not your 35 minute, you know, maximum heavy duty wash cycles no more. If you want, you know, the longest you can wash on this washer, it doesn't depend on the cycle. It depends on the cycle and the size of the load. Now, because if I put a full, if I put one and a half baskets worth of clothes in here and it will fit it, uh, that load time can jump up to an hour and 45 minutes or greater um, because it also is going to sense the size of the load and adjust the time accordingly because a lot of that time comes from filling the drum up with water. Um, now, it will use less water, which now, now I will say less water means a whole different thing to every brand of washer. Less water for Samsung is not the same as less water for LG and the less water for Maytag and less water for Whirlpool and less water for Kenmore and, uh, you know, that everybody has their own meaning of less water. And I'm here to tell you, LG's, le I mean, LG's less water is that the clothes will be ever so slightly above the water. You will still be able to see the water and you can actually submerge your arm in the water. Now with Samsung, if you don't load this washing machine correctly, you have bumped its load calibration off and it won't put but just a tad bit of water in there. I will tell you that this washer is pretty darn good in terms of washing, but in terms of you have to load it like it tells you to and that's a lot a lot of things you have to follow the instructions if you there's there's only a there's a right and a wrong way to do things and you can't necessarily blame Samsung themselves if you did not properly load the washer like it told you to because the way you load these washers is you have to make it visible at least this part has to be visible so you can't just take a basket of clothes and just dump it over in the top because it's only the clothes are going to be sitting on top of this. You want the clothes to be sitting on top of these right here. You want the clothes to be sitting on top of these as far to the edge of the drum as possible because the weight of the clothes is going to put resistance on this impeller down here. And the resistance that's sitting on that impeller is going to tell the, the computer and the washer how large of a load it has in it. Now, the difference between Samsung and LG is that LG has a lot more sophisticated load sensing than Samsung does. Matter of fact, um, some of those ones that have that little rib right here, that little, it's, it sits about right in here. And y'all know what I'm talking about. It, the LG washers, the LG Wayfords, they have that little rib that sits right there. And you will see it shake the whole top of this thing, kind of like twist it a little bit, just to kind of get a little bit of, and then it moves its impeller around a little bit, and then it locks the, the drum, and it starts to spin. And the resist, it'll spin once or twice or maybe three times. The resistance that's on that motor and the weight that's being pushed down on this is going to tell that one, the LGs, how much is on it. But on this one, it's not as sophisticated. It just shake, it just moves the impeller around, which is part of the reason why it's not as accurate. Now, I'm not going to be biased. I'm not going to be biased towards the Samsung just because I'm standing in front of it. Because I'm here to tell you, if you're going to get a washer, um, you need to weigh your options. You know, because, I mean, I'm here to tell you, LG is, LG's washers are a little bit more violent in terms of wash action, the bloom in the drum, as in, because when your clothes are washing, you want them to bloom. You want them to turn over and equally get washed. You don't want them just to sit there and just be moving back and forth. That's not necessarily the case with this washer, but I'm here to tell you, there have been times where I have come over here and saw this washing machine and all my clothes are done were moving back and forth. It's still a great washer, but... You know, if, if peace of mind is what you want in, a, in, in your appliances, peace of mind, whether you're buying an HVAC system, a new oven, a new refrigerator, a new laundry set, 
Peace of mind. You don't want to have to sit up here and watch this thing the whole time it's washing. And if you're going to sit here and watch it for an hour and 24 minutes, you might as well reconsider your options. Um, LG, I mean, uh, Samsung is still a pretty darn good washing machine. But um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you the, uh, and it also can sense when you open and close the lid, by the way. So, um, you've got your perm, and I'm going to go through these. Uh, if, you, if you just do a straight, normal wash with, uh, with you know, 51 minutes is about the time you're going to get uh, for normal. That's where it's going to start, and it can actually go down to, like, 43. Depending on, like I said, depending on the size of the load, it will adjust the time accordingly. It can go up, stay the same, or down. And there have been, and for this load, it will more than likely go up a little bit. Um, your permanent press cycle. And keep in mind, the heavier the soil level, the longer the wash. So you've got your temperature on this side. You've got, uh, right now, it's defaulting on warm. I'm going to turn my light off. I turn my light off. You see it's defaulting on warm. You've got hot. When you don't see a light at all, that zero right there, if you can see, that stands for tap cold. So right now, it's not going to put any, because even when you select cold on these washers, because you're using a different type of detergent and you're going to be using high efficiency detergent for these types of washers, if you want to get the most accurate, you know, cleaning and the most accurate soil levels taken care of, you want to use high efficiency detergent um, with the heat badge on it. It's it, You can kind of see it right there. The heat detergent, I'll, I'll actually pull it out of the um, closet. The type of detergent you're going to want to use is going to have this heat symbol on it. You see it right there? That heat stands for high efficiency. Um, it's going to be, a lot of times it'll say for all washers or something like that. And for this one, it's not on the front. It's going to be on the back. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's on the back. And you can actually even use heat detergent for a standard washing machine, but you don't necessarily want to use uh, standard detergent for a high efficiency washing machine because they use less water. You can use that type of detergent, but you're going to want to use it in moderation. So you don't want to just dump a whole lot of it in there. You want to put a little bit less because less water equals less ability for this to dissolve and be concentrated within the water. You don't want to have a super soapy mixture of water and not enough water to co to compensate for the amount of soap that you just dumped in there. Um, fabric softener as well. Um, you see, let me see. I don't think that one's on the front either. A lot of times, some some brands put it on the front, some brands put it on the back. So when you go to the, I'm gonna put that right there because I'm gonna use it in a second. When you go to your uh, to your store, Target, Walmart, wherever, um, make sure it's got the heat badge on it. Um, so, like I said, to go back to the temperatures, you got cold, uh, which the first one was tap cold, cold, eco warm, warm, and then hot. Now, what I do want to point out is that even when you use cold, it will still use a little bit of hot. Some washers will open both the cold and the hot side of water at the same time. This washer, you, it will actually, most high efficiency washers, in fact, in fact, the LG does the same thing. It will close its hot water damper and open the cold water damper and vice versa. It switches back and forth. Those older style traditional washers, they, they just dump both warm, at, I mean, both hot and cold water in there at the same time. Um, but these washers, they switch back and forth between the two. Um, so... Eco warm is it's not cold, but it's not warm. I mean, you to us, our hand, we'll barely be able to notice the difference between cold and eco warm. But a lot of times, eco warm is the best temperature to go with because it's not cold to where the stains won't, you know, release themselves. Because for me, I deal with a lot of oil and a lot of grunt and grime and stuff so I have to use a little bit warmer temperature but I've got a lot of colors in this load I don't want my you know white Calvin Klein's to turn in black you know so I want to use maybe eco warm on it um, and you got your spin speed and I'm gonna show you go to normal cycle if you choose to do no spin it will decrease your time by about 10 minutes um, but I don't know why you would want to do that but um, and see this one, it won't even let you do a low speed spin on a normal cycle. So, you know, your average, your lowest you can go on the normal cycle is going to be medium and then high. Um, so you got your soil level, which is light, light, normal, heavy. So really a normal cycle will run you about 53 minutes instead of 51. Um, and actually, this is the funny thing about this washer. I'm going to show you. This washer is your normal cycle can actually last longer than a heavy duty cycle. I'm going to show you. 
If I do everything, heavy soil level, aqua jet, that's an hour and 24 minutes. But if I go to heavy duty and I select the same thing, it doesn't adjust the time at all. So if you want longer cycles, you can choose to do that. But also if you want a longer heavy duty cycle, you select that, which is aqua jet, deep clean, and pre so which puts you at an hour and 28. And if you do that same thing on a normal wash, that'll land you at an hour and 39 to start off with that's before it adds more time based on the size of the load so to the dryer this dryer is different than the lg and that the lg has a little door right here i don't know if the newer ones have it, but i know the lg wave force the 2011 model we had there's a little door right here that you flip open and uh for the because these are steam dryers you see that it, you got multi-steam lg calls it true steam i don't know what other brands call it basically a steam dryer now i'm gonna go ahead and rack samsung out for this okay before i even start with the dryer let me move this out of the way uh, before i even start with let me turn that off yes they sing to you um before i even start with this dryer i'm gonna start by saying this the difference between the steam cycle you would not be able to tell unless you sat here and you watched it. LG, the reason they call it true steam is because it actually truly steams. Okay, you'll look at that door and you'll see it fog up and get all moist and you can't even see what's in there. You'll see water running down it because it gets hot. It actually has Samsung, I mean, LG has their own water heater built into this uh, dryer and it heats that water up and boils it and it sprays it off up in there. Samsung doesn't do that. Samsung, I'm going to show you what Samsung does. Samsung's uh, dryer just sprays cold water on your clothes in like a cold mist. And then it turns that heater on and it basically redries your clothes is what it does. Um, I'm in here to tell you it actually works the exact same. Okay, you may have, you're going to have wet spots on your clothes from both machines. But... If, if you're that picky about true stain, then you might as well go with LG. That's about my only thing to tell you about that because it does the same thing. The greater side about Samsung over LG is that you know you do not have a door where you have to constantly feel every you know two to, th two to four cycles worth of stain. You don't have to constantly feel that little Tupperware uh, bowl up and close the flap and close it and push it. You got to push the little thing up and then close it. That's not the case with Samsung. Samsung actually taps off of the cold water side. And it, you can see down there, it taps off and goes into the back of the dryer. I'm trying to find it. You see it, it taps off right here. It kind of tees off and goes down to the, it actually taps off down there, as you can see. So Samsung has a constant flow of cold water going to the dryer. You have to put cold water in either one of them. But Samsung heats their steam up or heats their, they basically get their heat from the actual dryer heating element down in there. Uh, LG actually blows hot steam on it and then dries the clothes again. Your clothes are still getting wet either way. It's just the way that it does it. Like I said, LG injects your clothes with steam, with hot steam. Samsung just sprays cold water on your clothes and then heats up, basically. Um, this, they're not going to be completely soaked, but you turn the dryer on. Oh, it's all pretty. Okay, here's one thing I want to say first. On a normal cycle, it does not actually take an hour and 15 minutes to dry your clothes, okay? This button right here has a lot to do with it. And most people will say, oh my gosh, my dryer takes forever to dry my clothes and then it doesn't actually dry them. Well, here's the thing. EcoDry has a lot to do with it, okay? That's about the same amount of time the LG takes. And the reason I'm comparing it to the LG is because I don't think LG actually has an eco dry mode which basically it's going to heat the clothes up less often so it may skip one or two heating cycles just to save on the bill and it'll do it'll do a little bit of it'll do a little bit more air drying than it will heat drying so because it's basically there's current there's there's a constant flow of air moving through this dryer which can dry your clothes just as effectively and it's already going to be warm in there so it's going to actually be doing a, a warm uh air dry instead of a constantly heating on and off you know it's just a little bit less in the bill but it runs a little bit more time you know you can do the math on that it probably doesn't make maybe a difference of 50 cents in your power bill maybe um so i would just do a normal cycle with normal heat let it do its thing for 42 minutes and be done with it because if you're already taking an hour and some change to wash and an hour and change some dry to dry 
you might as well, you know, it's going to take you three hours to, to complete an entire load. And that's before you've done folded it and put it up. Because um, if you're like me, I leave my clothes in the dryer and I kind of get dressed out of the laundry room. So I leave all my clothes in the dryer. For what that, don't judge me. I leave all my clothes in the dryer. And as soon as I get up in the morning, I turn the dryer on on the time dry cycle and I run it on low heat for 40 minutes until I get out the shower and brush my teeth and get ready to come to it. And by the time 40 minutes is done, I've done, or 30 minutes has went by, I've got 10 minutes left and I come in here and my clothes are de-wrinklified and they're slightly warm because I'm cold after I got out the shower. That's just me. Um, if you look, you've got almost the same cycles on the dryer as you do the washer. You've got normal, heavy duty, bedding, permanent press, one difference is permanent press is on this side, whereas on the washer, it's on it's right here, as you can see, permanent press. Um, your time dry is going to override the moisture sensor. So everything in orange gives you the sensor dry and the steam cycle. So if, it, if it's in orange, you can get the steam dry and the sensor. Now, here's the thing. The dryer has a cycle that the washer doesn't have, and that's a cycle for towels. That's kind of weird to me. I think the washer should have a cycle for towels too. But the cycle, like I said, the cycle that you use for towels is going to be bedding. Because the towel is considered a buggy item. Because the reason I say that is because they actually sent the recall out on these on these washers that uh, you were actually supposed to put a uh, another plate on top of this, another uh, little sticker that cancels these cycles and they programmed it to that sticker. So... Certain cycles that you would normally use, you would actually change it up and use it for a different cycle. So for bedding, you would actually use towels because we all know that towels and stuff, they triple their weight when they get wet. And if that thing starts spinning and it gets off balance and you've got, you know, 13 to 20, you know, towels in there, a full load of towels, basically, that thing's going to blow its top off. And I have seen pictures of both LG and Samsung washers doing that because people are not using the correct cycle for these machines. It, it's, it's not so much as a creature comfort, the reason they give you these cycles. They're giving you these cycles because they were programmed to operate for the weight and the size of those loads. You know, they were programmed for those types of clothes. So you don't need to be putting towels in there on a heavy duty wash or a normal wash or a permanent press wash because those are not the correct cycles for those for those bulky items. So uh, Refresh is going to use the steam cycle. If you've had something sitting in there for two or three days and it starts smelling like outside, because keep in mind that dryer vent is vented outside. So as you can see, it's vented outside. And if it starts smelling like outside, you just put it on refresh and it kind of freshens the clothes up with steam. If you are too lazy to iron or you like to use the steam cycle to iron your clothes, you get a wrinkle cycle. Um, if you're, if you're Now that steam sanitized, I'm going to rephrase that for you. That is an allergen cycle is what that is. Um, you don't have a steam wash cycle on the washer, but you do have a, a uh, like LG has an allergen with steam. Uh, they got steam wash on the LGs too. So um, if you use if you're if you if you're a family with that you're highly allergic to pollen or you've got things in your house that like dust and stuff, and if you just want to add an extra layer of protection and uh, it's really for what's the word what's the word disinfecting is what it is. So you know because a lot of times laundry detergent doesn't actually disinfect your clothes it just washes them. If you want to do the disinfecting and de-germing, yeah I said de-germing. Uh, you can use the steam sanitizer, and you've got delicates and uh, all that good stuff. So down here, you've also got your. Uh, let me turn this light back on because th this uh, dryer also has an auto light off feature. The light right, the lights right there. Um, if you leave this dryer open for a certain amount of time, it cuts the light off. I don't think that I know the LG of the model year that we had, the 2011 Wave Force, didn't have that function. So I'd come downstairs the next day, and the light would still be on. Um, so that's just another little, little, it's little things like that. It can get annoying when you're trying to get stuff out or you're fiddling through trying to find another sock and the light just cuts off on you. So it's a good and a bad. It's a pro and a con. So it, it's, if you like it, you like it, it's good. If you don't, you don't, you know, it's just one of those things. All you gotta do is just press the button and, uh, it'll come back on your filter. Okay. This filter is a little bit different. Um, but you, you don't, on these, you don't necessarily have to change them 
or are not changed. You don't necessarily have to clean it out after every load. As you can see, there is barely even any in there, but it's recommended that you flip this flap up and at least check because there's going to be some stuff in there. But the idea, the, the idea, huh? The idea is to clean this out after every load. You don't necessarily have to, but I'm telling you that it's the idea to clean this out after every load. Um, that's just for lint control and to have the proper amount of airflow um, going through that uh, fish paste. I can't even close it. Um, the proper amount of airflow going through that drive in at all times. If you don't put it on right, it won't go in right anyway. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and try to give you a little bit of wash action. You know, this, this is just a dryer. There's really not too much about it. Um, so, we'll focus on the washer. The Samsung Active Wash Aqua Jet VRT. Lots of names with the Energy Star. You know, all that good stuff. The base of the Samsung High Efficiency Top Loader. So, I'm going to load this washer. And I'm going to show you how to properly load it. And uh, to make sure that it senses properly like it's supposed to. So you do have to kind of load this one to three items at a time. So, you want to kind of load it evenly and all the way around you don't want to go here and here like you would normally you want to go around and build up like a spiral and action until it's even so for every load you want to kind of go a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more all around the impeller so you know kind of make sure that you're placing you know bulkier items you know if you if you put like i just dropped sweatpants i was putting shirts in there but i just put some heavy sweatpants that are going to weigh as much as three shirts so on that side i need to put another shirt on that side or something you know put another shirt on that side um so i've got my work pants these things got some weight to them you see all that dirt and grease um a lot of times that stuff just ain't gonna come out um because that's grease you can use hot water all day long you know if you get grease oil and grease and stuff um that those are that that stuff is kind of you know, I mean, that's pretty hard to get out, especially from a washing machine, any washing machine, really. Um, I've got a mixed load. I've got work clothes and I've got nice pants. Here's another thing about these washers. You can mix loads. I mean, mo you know, the days of putting jeans by themselves and white clothes by themselves, which you would still put white clothes by themselves, I'm here to tell you. But you can wash colors, darts, and jeans in the same load now. And your clothes will not get ruined like they would in those agitator style washing machines. Um, and I'm not hating on those washing machines. I still have an obsession. You notice how I'm keeping that middle thing visible. And you kind of want to push down on it because you don't want it to just be sitting in there. You want it to bear some weight on that. Um, and you want it to bear its natural weight on this impeller, around the outside of that impeller. Um, you notice how I'm just, you know, you don't ever want to cover that up because the, your weight's going to sit on the outside of that. Um, you see, here's a jacket. I need to flip that inside out. See, I'm just, I got some blue jeans right here. You know, I'm throwing blue jeans. I'm throwing khakis. I'm throwing work pants and jackets all in here. Um, you basically want it to look like it just came out of a spin cycle. You want to keep that middle visible at all times. Got it measured. I'm not going to put a whole lot in there because that's not really a full load. It's about halfway. Um, so, like I said, detergent's going to go on the right, liquid detergent. High efficiency detergent. Same thing with my favorite softener. So this is going to go to the left. All right. Close that up. Now, like I said, I've got a lot of options here. So I'm going to power it on. Um, so I'm going to do a heavy duty with um, the Aqua Jet. Let me go ahead and highlight that right quick. Aqua Jet. Um, Jet. This is what differs between Samsung and LG. Aquajet has a pump, okay, that, or Samsung has a pump where they, I can't even see where it's going to come out at, to be honest. Anyway, they basically, well, they, it has its own separate motor. I don't know if it uses the same as the drain motor or it has a separate motor. This thing may have up to three different motors in it. But anyway, it pumps the water that's already in the drum and, and recirculates it and it suctions it and or basically it pumps it back on top of the clothes is what it does um and it does and it actually is impelling or actuating or agitating which it doesn't have agitated but it's basically washing back and forth as it's doing that so as the clothes are moving it is suctioning and pumping the water back on top um the difference between samsung and lg is that lg's doesn't have a pump which i actually like lg's better because when it does it when lg does it 
it does that by natural g-forces. That's why they call it the wave force. It actually does the wave force. It will spin the clothes in the drum with water in there, and the natural force of the water will circulate and actually, kind of like a car wash, it will vortex itself back on top of the clothes. So as it's spinning, it's forcing the water back on top of the clothes. Okay, and to, I like that a lot better because it's act, that, that has a little bit more of an impact, and I'm here to tell you when it does that, it has a lot more impact because it forces the stains out of clothes while it's doing that and then dropping the water back on top of clothes by natural force. So the faster it spins, the more and harder the water comes out. This one, it's just it just pumps the clothes, the water back on top. It just pumps the water back on top. Um, it's not a bad thing, but it's kind of the same idea, but with less of an impact, if you will. Um, so yeah, like I said, Eco Warm, Eco Warm, high spin speed, heavy soil level. I want Aqua Jet as well. Um, I don't want any pre-soaking. Um, so yeah, just press start and we'll be on our way. I'm gonna pause it because um, you saw that light start flashing the first thing when I lock, when I click it. That door is going to lock and that sensor is going to tell it that that door is locked. Um, and they also have indicator lights as to where it is in its cycle. You've got wash, rinse, and spin. You've got door lock. You've got child lock. You can actually turn the sound off. Um, let me see. If you just hold it down, anything that's highlighted in white, these little indicators above the control panels will tell you that in, in white with the star, anything with a star means that if you have to hold it for three seconds. So if I wanted child lock, I'd hold spin and soil level for three seconds. Now child lock is on. So the ch your child can't come up to it and uh, push buttons after the lid locks. So I'm gonna turn child lock back off. And if I didn't want this thing to make a sound, I'd just hold the temperature button for three seconds. And now it's muted. So now any button I press, it doesn't make any sound. When I turn it off, it doesn't make any sound. When I turn it on, it doesn't make any sound. Um, you probably don't want to do that because these things already take forever to wash anyway. So I'm going to turn that back on. And uh, I'm going to show you this thing doing its load calibration. So I'm going to get my, you know, get this thing all set up and see this thing do a little bit of washing. So. And if y'all actually, matter of fact, if y'all want me to do certain loads like towels and sheets, load comforters and stuff like that, you know, just comment in the load in the section so you can see exactly how this thing handles different loads. Um, I know this. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, the LG. I mean, it can handle loads as heavy as the car mats, the 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 carpeted floor mats in your car. Yeah, that thing. I mean, it was just snatching dirt off of my car's floor mats. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start this one. This is just gonna be my normal load, um, with a heavy duty soil level, heavy duty. Um, so like I said, if you want towels, if you want sheets, if you want some delicate items like this right here. Um, if you want some white clothes, which I don't even have white clothes myself. Yes, I do. But if you want white clothes, you know, just comment what you want to see washed in this machine. And I'll, and I'll make certain videos on just certain wash cycles. So but for this, we're going to go ahead and get started.
guys I hope you enjoyed my video of the Samsung uh, high efficiency top load laundry pair with the matching dryer I think this is a 4.8 cubic feet um, washing machine so um, and as you can see my clothes aren't dangerously tangled up I mean they may have looked like they were tangled while it was washing but they're not just too too badly tangled but uh thanks for watching subscribe to my channel share my video this is TC you know who it is